All right, stat students. So we're going to do this one last lesson before spring break. Uh, and we're still talking about significance tests. We may not do any calculations today, just keeping it simple before we uh, go to break. When we get back, we will start doing a lot of significance test calculations uh, in preparation for uh, closing out this semester, okay? But let's go ahead and, uh, and get into it today. All right, so <clears throat> we're gonna be talking about um, errors when we make conclusions so this was yesterday's uh, the last lesson slide where we talked about okay we're either going to reject the null hypothesis or we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis okay those are uh, those are the two options that we have for these hypothesis tests now sometimes things can go wrong uh, in your in your tests so I'm gonna make this slide bigger here okay so uh, when we draw a conclusion from a significance test, we hope our conclusion will be correct, but sometimes it will be wrong. There's two types of mistakes that you can make. So you can reject HO when HO is true. So we think about our basketball shooters. Uh, maybe the sample that we got was biased somehow. Something happened that made us reject it. Uh, and in fact, they were an 80% shooter. Okay. That would be type one error. And we sort of saw that with, um, well, actually, no, we didn't see that. Uh, we actually saw the other one, type two error happen. Uh, if we fail to reject HO when HA is true, we've committed type two error. So we saw the second shooter, we shot all of his shots, but we didn't have enough evidence to reject that 80%. It wasn't really, it didn't seem like it was significant. It wasn't far enough. Um, from the actual mean. He was a 70% shooter though, so he technically was below. So that would be type two error that we committed, okay? Uh, and then we, so you're gonna have, we have three questions in the problem set that sort of go off of this type one, type two error here. And um, this chart here, let me move my camera. Okay, this chart here is what we're gonna be using to uh, help us keep track of the types of errors. Now this will be important uh, for a couple questions on the test. Uh, so uh, you can draw a sort of a simplified version of this in your notes. Up on the top we have what is true. So any scenario that exists, you have the null hypothesis is true or the null hypothesis is false. We never really know this, right? We're making, uh, that's why we're running the test because we're trying to see if there's evidence for one or the other, right? That's sort of the, the hidden truth right here. HO true, HO false, which means the alternate's true. Uh, and then you always come up with a conclusion. This is what we always figure out at the end. We either reject or fail to reject. And this shows the types of error that occur with that. So I'm gonna pause the video and, and let you make sure that you get this written down and, and you just have this in your notes, okay? All right, so let's practice some problems um, for uh, for AP students, your questions will mostly line up with these, but we're going to start with number 17 here in the problem set. And it says, if we reject the null hypothesis when in fact the, uh, uh oh, whoops, hold on. If we reject the null hypothesis when in fact it is true, we have committed what type of error? Well, if I pull up, if I look at my chart that I just wrote down in my notes, Okay, so it's saying, let me move that over. It's saying we rejected the null hypothesis. So over here we started here. What did we do? We rejected null hypothesis. Okay, so it's going to be one of these. All right, then when in fact it is true. So we reject it when it happened to be true. That is type one error. So we're going to say we committed a type one error. Okay, that's what happened there. Okay. A type two error, what is that? Type two error is, well, we go to our chart. Type two error happens when we fail to reject HO, when HO is false. Okay, so that's type two. So we fail to reject HO when it is false. And it looks like that's B is the best answer on that one. All right, so number 19 sort of brings up a the point of this and why it's important to talk about these errors because uh, when you're talking about a basketball shooter, that's not a very serious situation, right? 
Um, what really is the issue or what, what could go wrong with these type these errors, right? Um, and, and this is why people are concerned about it, right? When, uh, like, think about this, the vaccine that is going out for COVID. It had to go through statistical test research to show that it was effective, right? It had to meet a certain threshold. And the researcher said, okay, if it doesn't meet this certain threshold, then, you know, we're going to have to go back to formula. We're going to have to go back and, and readjust and do another test, right? And... <clears throat> What can happen here is is sort of almost this ethical dilemma where, um, you know, the researchers may just out of interest of time or money, uh, you know, they may say, OK, you know, this uh, in our best interest to show that it's significant so we can push it out and get the public vaccinated and we can make money. But if it's not actually effective, right, so w whichever direction that they have their test set up here, uh, then they've committed the error. So a lot of times, if you think about this, this can be uh, sort of selfish interest within the, uh, the people who want this information. Um, that's why a lot of times you see third party research group do you'll see that in like studies and commercials and stuff like that for like medicine and stuff like that a third party because it's biased there is a level of bias that a company has when they're pushing out a product obviously they're a company they're a business they want to make money uh so they can't let that interfere so a lot of times you'll have third party research groups do this stuff so you have to be aware of that if it's in the interest of of if there's money to be gained, there needs to be some sort of third party doing the experimentation. Uh, otherwise, the the you, you'd you be very concerned about it. So whenever you're reading something and they say it's statistically significant or they found significance in the data, uh, that's something you want to consider. Who actually ran the test, right? That's where these errors can come in, okay? So that's sort of the, the, uh, the idea. So... Uh, this question here is saying, in the testing hypothesis, if the consequences of incorrectly rejecting the null hypothesis are very serious, we should do what? Well, so how do we reject the null hypothesis? We go back to our chart. So how what causes us to reject HO? Well, we said right here, the p-value needs to be smaller than alpha, right? We want a very small p-value, okay? Um, <clears throat> so how do we... How do we make sure that uh, that it's not significant? Well, we need to use a very low level of significance. So right here, we just want to make alpha very small, like very small. That's going to help prevent us from ha causing this type of error. The type of error that we're discussing here is incorrectly rejecting the null hypo hypothesis. That's going to be, if we incorrectly reject it, that would be this section here type one error that's incorrectly re rejecting the null hypothesis this is basically saying like imagine that you are a uh, restaurant this isn't serious consequences but imagine you're a restaurant and um, you're losing business and you're saying well maybe it's my menu do customers not like the way that the menu's printed things like that uh, you know I'm not gonna say that that's super serious but I know a lot of you have restaurant jobs uh, but let's say you put out a survey to customers and say, how do you feel about the menu? And you just ask them questions that are, you know, not biased or, or anything like that. It's a random sample and it comes back. And, but there, it, let's say that there happens to be some sort of bias in the sampling and it comes back. It says, okay, you do need to change your menus. Well, what is that? I mean, what does that mean? Well, as a, as a business owner, you're going to have to pay for, um, you know, printing and all this stuff here. You have to go through all these serious things. Um, or excuse me, all these expensive processes, even though HO was true, you didn't really need to make that change. Okay. So it's super important in a business standpoint that, uh, that these tests are run properly, that there's no bias, that, that everything is done correctly. Because in, in the real scheme of things, when you're making really important decisions, this all has to be done correctly because there are consequences. So how do we, how do we limit the, the probability, I guess you'd say, of incorrectly rejecting it, well, you're gonna use a smaller significance level, okay? So B. Now, by the way, AP since this is number 21 for you on, uh, on your uh, problem set, okay? We're gonna write down one more note uh, 
for, for all students. After this note here for dual credit students, I'm gonna have y'all stop, but I need AP students to keep watching, okay? But this is, uh, this is gonna be a, an important definition here. The significance level alpha, so that's sort of what question 19 was just referring to, or question 21 for AP. The significance level alpha of any fixed level test is the probability of the type one error. I need you to write this down right there. So I'm gonna pause and make sure you've got it. Okay. All right, so the probability of type one error is equal to alpha, okay? It's directly related to how, um, to, uh, to rejecting the null hypothesis. Uh, if we pull up, let me pull up the slide we had, hold on. So this is what I'm referring to. So we said alpha, which is the significance level is Point, uh, point 0.05. So if we really want to make sure that we don't reject, because anything outside, so this red line, the shooter one, he was outside of that, right? His probability, he's so far away from that mean that uh, his probability, you know, it was, was very far. But if we want to reduce the probability of, re of, uh, of rejecting the null hypothesis, we just lower alpha, right? We, we lower alpha to make it smaller, it kind of gives other values more opportunity, right? It's uh, increasing, essentially, it's it's like saying there's an increased confidence level, okay? An increased confidence level. We are, there's gonna be more values that can uh, fail to reject the null hypothesis. That's what that's doing, okay? So that's gonna be the final definition for dual credit. Um, for AP students, we have to talk about another idea that we're going to uh, write in our notes, and we're going to watch a video. I'm going to sort of keep my camera up as we react to another video talking about something called power, but I'm going to pull up my slide. Dual credit students, you can stop your video here, okay? It'll be fine, okay? Stop your video here. Uh, you're good.